who are not members of the subcommittee, but they're allowed to ask questions under the rules of the subcommittee. So, Mr. Barrow, I know you've been here all day. Uh, would you like to have five minutes of questions? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm not as good a cross-examiner as my, as my hero, Mr. Dingle, here, and I'm not as good as Mr. Braley over there, so I'm going to throw you guys a softball. I'm going to ask you a wide, open-ended question. But, but listen to the conditions of it, because it might, seem, might, might not seem that way, especially you, Dr. Sundloff. If you believe that the integrity of testing cannot be separated from the integrity of sampling, and the sampling and testing are both things that have to have integrity, if you want to preserve the existing regime of voluntary inspections and confidential re reporting uh, with, the consult with the testing community, but you feel it's necessary to mandate and superimpose on that a mandatory sampling and testing regime. If you want to make sure that the sampling and testing that's done isn't, isn't too rigorous, that you put folks out of business, but isn't too lax to miss stuff you need to know. In other words, if you want to do everything you reasonably can to make sure First, that the manufacturer knows what the manufacturer needs to know when the manufacturer needs to know it. And you want to make sure that the regulator knows what the manufacturer knows, whatever it is, when they know it. How do we go about doing that? Dr. Son, I'll, you go first, please. Thank you. <clears throat> well, one of the things that, uh, again, we have asked, we, and we will be asking for more authority, and that is to, uh, to, to issue uh, preventive controls in plants. That is, they have to have a quality system in place that specifies where the critical control points are, where, where contaminants can be introduced. Is, they a, have to is a sampling and testing regime going to be a part of that? Yeah, absolutely. Is it going to be goals or is it going to be quotas? Is it, going to be, is it going to be something we think folks ought to look at or is it going to be something folks are going to require to do it? So you're going to have different, thing, different, different protocols for different sectors of the food processing industry. Um, manufacturers will have to develop their own HACCP plan, which is specific to their particular manufacturing facility. Are you going to require sampling be done by folks who have an independent stake in, the, in, in, in their work, folks who don't work for just one person or work within the company, but who have a whole bunch of clients who actually stand to lose a lot if they, aren't, if they, aren't, if they don't do their sampling and their testing in a credible manner? I mean, I can't speak about how the, the exact... Uh, the program would work, but certainly there has to be these these checks and balances in there that can be verified by the FDA. You'll, you'll agree with me that folks can't be allowed to sample and test themselves. Uh, I, I'm I'm not I'm not completely sure about. When that. I was a when I was you know when I was a, a boy, I learned at my daddy's knee that no person can be the judge of his own case. Don't you all know that? Yeah, there there may be there may be ways that we could ensure the integrity even if they they sample their own product and test their own product. I, uh, so I'm not saying folks can't be allowed to do that. I'm saying we need to have a we need to have a, a sampling and a testing regime in place. In addition to the powers of mandatory recall that folks have talked about, we need to have a, a system in place where the manufacturer really doesn't have the option of knowing what they need to know when they need to know it. And they don't get to be the only ones who decide to act on that information. The the public regulator needs to know what they know and when they know it. Don't, don't you think that's necessary? That that's, yes, that's, that's the goal we need to reach for? Yes, and that is what we are requesting. Thank you. Well, that remains to be seen. Thank you. Anybody else want to take a stab at any of that with a little time left? How about you, Mr. Dybal? If I, if I, I understand the point you're making, but you, re, you realize the point I'm making, don't you? I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to drive people out of the business knowing more than they need to know, but I want to make sure they know what they need to know and that we know what they know when we need to know it. I, I think there are a lot of opportunities in the subcommittee and in the discussions that we're going to be having um, to really build stronger bridges between government and industry and agree upon best practices that we can all use. I hope those best practices include preventative approaches rather than reactive approaches. Well, what I want to do is I want to take you guys out of the situation of having to rat out a client in an existing regime where folks have the right to come to you and ask as a matter of, as a matter of entering into the contractual relationship with you that you'll keep quiet with what they got. That puts you in an untenable position. That's unacceptable. I recognize your, your interest there. Nobody can go forward. No part of the existing system can go forward and start doing the right thing. Everybody else is going to continue to be allowed to do the wrong thing. So I want to put in place something that doesn't let that happen. Ms. Coward, you got anything to add to that? Um, no, sir. I, I agree with that in terms of what you're, what you're talking about. I think the, the broader picture of how that gets done is, is something that we would really like to be a part of helping with the solution. Well, get ready because I think you're going to have a chance to play a role Thank in that. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs>